everyone, it's Hannah and Kaylin for Double Talk, and today we're kicking off a segment called Double Talk Asks. The inspiration behind the segment is the fact that Kaylin and I here spend a lot of time together. We are coming to you from a studio apartment in Manhattan. That we share. If I have well, an idea or a question, she's going to hear it and vice versa. Yeah, so what happens is we end up having these debates and these conversations that just kind of go in circles. This is us. The truth is, neither of us have any idea what we're talking we're about. We're not experts at all. So we figured we'd start a segment where we ask experts to answer these shower thought type questions that we have. We're so excited to kick off the segment today talking about lucid dreaming with Lori Lowenberg. She's an expert in the field of not just dreaming, but lucid dreaming. She's like your go-to girl when it comes to questions about lucid dreaming. She's been on Dr. Oz, she's been on the Today Show, she's been on Steve Harvey. We asked Sigmund Freud for comment, but unfortunately for many reasons he was unavailable. He was unavailable but I can assure you that Lori is the next best option. So next time we see you guys, we'll be on the phone with Lori Lowenberg talking about lucid dreaming. See you then. First, I want to clarify with you, Lori, that I'm what I'm experiencing is actually lucid dreaming as you define it and as how experts define it. So what happens is I'll be in a nightmare, and I was just talking to Hannah, I never have dreams. Like, if I'm dreaming, it's a nightmare, which is weird. I guess that's a story for another time. But... I'll be in a nightmare, and then all of a sudden, I'll come to the realization that I'm in a nightmare, and that what's happening isn't real, and sometimes it's almost like I can pull myself out of it, like if I try hard, it's the feeling is almost like if I open my eyes wide enough, or like if I try hard enough, mm -hmm. then I'll be able to pull myself out of it, and sometimes I feel like I actually can, and I do, but then the other half of the time, I can't get myself out of it, so I like finish the nightmare knowing that I'm in a nightmare, and it almost becomes like a thing of, oh, I just want to get it over with. But I feel that I can't actually control the outcome in yeah. a way. Is that how you define lucid dreaming or is that something else? It sounds like you're reaching some level of lucidity. The fact that you are aware it's a dream makes it lucid. But the fact that you're not able to take control at that point, uh, I, I guess that would indicate you've not reached enough depth of lucidity. I guess my question is, when you have control of the dream, what does that look like? Yeah, okay, so this is where lucid dreaming becomes the coolest experience on earth. Because you can, you're in the dream, you know it's a dream, and then you can direct it any way you like. So you can, like what I do, I become lucid about once a month in my dream. So I like to fly, or I like to like walk through walls just to make sure that I have the control I want. Mm -hmm. I also will ask questions, which I think is the most powerful thing you can do once you're in the lucid state. You know, making your favorite celebrity appear before you, flying, you know, talk, traveling, all that's fun, but there's nothing cooler and more beneficial than actually asking someone in your dream a question because then you're having a conversation with your subconscious mind on a conscious level so so, so you're almost so, answering your own question how you want them to be answered at that point right well you don't know what kind of answer you're going to get for example i had this one i used to do this radio show in california once a month and the host told me about his lucid dreams Mm -hmm. that would have these little creatures in it that looked like the Sandman from Star Wars. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he would do like you, and he'd wake himself up to get out of it. So I told him, next time this happens, ask a question of these little creatures. Like, who are you? What are you trying to tell me? And see what sort of answer you get. So he did that. And when he asked them, who are you? They said, we are your sins. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> you know, right? See, hearing that, I'm now pretty confident I've never experienced this. But it's almost it. like, tell me if this makes I've sense. Because I've never reached that level of control. <laughs> I've perhaps had the option to do that, except for I never took the opportunity. It's like if I know that I'm in a dream and I feel like I can get out of it, I can now take it a step further. You should be able to take it a step further. It, it really does depend on the person, but I think the fact that you've done this enough that you are aware of the theme and now you know you have this option available to you, I think you'd probably be able to do it. Gosh, that's fascinating. Now, we had a friend in college that 
uh, this I, mean, I don't know about I don't know if this is normal, but we ended up having conversations about dreams with our friends a lot. And he claimed, and, and the way that he described it, he was full on lucid dreaming, controlling his dreams. He told us that something about the way, like he was telling us, this is how you do it. You have to lie down, and then for 20 minutes you have to think about, like he was almost saying that there was like a, something you can do so that anybody could experience it at will. Is that is that true? Right. What you want to do is set your alarm in the morning, go off about 20 or 30 minutes earlier than you normally get up. Okay. So say you normally you get up at 6.30. Set it for 6.10 or for 6. And then when it goes off, hit the snooze. Mm-hmm. But, you know, make sure you have it set so that you do get up at the right time you're supposed to. Right. right. Hannah, so would you kill me if my alarm went off 20 minutes earlier? <laughs> we share a room, so I need to run this by my 20 minutes. <laughs> I guess. Get <laughs> as long as I can too, I guess. If you hit the snooze, you're likely going to fall back asleep. But you only have that 20 minute window where you're not going to fall deep enough into the deep delta sleep. You're going to stay in the lighter stages of sleep mm-hmm. where you're likely to fall back into the dream state but still hold on to enough of your consciousness that you'll be able to realize, okay, wait, this is a dream. And then you can take control and do anything you want. Why might somebody else experience full-on lucid dreaming without really even trying? There's a couple reasons why some people are more prone to lucid dreaming than others. Mm -hmm. One is that these people are already interested in their dreams and pay attention to them. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and then they look forward to, and they journal them, and they're just, they just already have a relationship with their dream life. Um, the other thing that makes people more prone to lucid dream is your personality type. So if you're, you know, more on the artistic side, you're very introspective. You're a poet, you're a writer, you're an artist, you're a musician. You're using that creative side of your brain that dreams come from. Right. Mm-hmm. So these people are, are, are more likely to become lucid as well. We're identical twins. Maybe if we both set our alarms for the same time and we're able to both experience it, what if our dreams like line up? Well, we do and match have. Up? We actually do have the same dreams. Right. Often. I'd love to research you two. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. But I will start telling a very detailed dream, and then my sister will finish it. The FBI would want you guys for secret weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could answer this too. Why Why is it that some dreams we forget the second we wake up and some dreams we remember even years later? Even years later. Right. We, we never forget a nightmare. No. <laughs> oh my stay gosh. stay with us forever. Yeah. <laughs> so typically, the more bizarre or intense the dream, the more likely you are to remember it. Also, um, it depends on when you wake up. You know, if you're a deep sleeper, you're going to sleep all the way through the night and, and not re- We have about five to seven dreams every night. So the lighter you sleep, you know, the more you're going to wake up throughout the night, the more likely you're going to remember those dreams. If right. you're mm-hmm. a deep sleeper and just sleep all the way through, you're not likely to remember your dreams. And when sleep experts study this, is there something different going on in, in your brain waves when you're lucid dreaming than when you're regular dreaming? No, that's a very good question, and there hasn't been a whole lot of research into those differences, Mm -hmm. but there would be um, a different part of the brain during the lucid state that's active Mm -hmm. that is normally dormant during regular REM sleep. Is there an area of lucid dreaming that you think is under-researched or misunderstood that you'd most like to see come to surface or come to light over the next couple years? I would like to see it used more in therapy. Okay. Because the, the truth is our subconscious is the most honest, and powerful part of who we are. And everything we've ever experienced lies within the subconscious, as well as all the answers and solutions we need for ourselves. It's all built right in. Mm -hmm. So being able to use lucid dreaming as a means to get directly in touch with the subconscious and ask it questions could be such a fast track to healing in whatever area of your psyche you're trying to heal you know, in, in order to, to facing things from the past, in order to face current fears and anxieties, 
all the answers would be right there. I would love to see more of that done in therapy. And wouldn't it be great to be able yeah. to record your dreams? Well, let me tell you something. The Japanese are working on a dream DVR as we speak. Whoa. <laughs> They're using MRI technology to map the brain. And while someone is in a dream for example they're dreaming they're on the beach and there's seagulls everywhere by somehow being able to map the brain activity they're able to recreate what the dreamer is seeing on a screen now it's really really fuzzy but it kind of resembles a, a seagull right I wow that. that's fascinating <laughs> thank you so much thank again you. that was insane asking yourself you're dreaming self questions. That's crazy. And asking other people who actually are in your life. Yeah, questions. I've certainly never experienced that. So it's crazy. It's, well, it's almost like is that more of a reflection of that person or of you? Your projections on. It's probably person. a projection of the way that you see them. Yeah. So both. <laughs> I feel like we've just opened a new door that we're going to <laughs> rush right into. And let us know if there's anything that you're interested in or any questions that you have that you'd like us to investigate next. And then we'll see you next time on Double Talk Ask.